faculty thinks I've gone loopy, like some kind of spongy Mobius strip. That's why I'm here, isn't it, Dr. Decker? I can see people's dreams. I've uh, set up an experiment. My dad is trying to hurt me. Quantum suicide. Have you heard of it? If I concentrate hard enough, and I know when the person's going to be asleep, I can have the dream with them. Well, let's call him God. He creates this world for his amusement, something he can play with and occasionally alter to suit his mood. It feels like the paintings are watching me. Sometimes, when I walk through a door, it takes me somewhere else, literally somewhere else. God loves chaos, but something goes wrong. Man and woman evolve. What was once chaotic becomes, well, more ordered. It starts as a door-to-door -door saleswoman. Double blazing, probably. Dr. Decker, I think we both know what you dreamed about last night. I've seen its silhouette changing through the window. Because he thinks I'm evil. Because I can see things other people can't. On the basis, the central component of our universe is chaos. Science can only document a perception of the chaos at any one given moment in time. I did what you said, Doctor. They arrested me. Which means that at any given moment, we can choose to alter our perception of the world. No matter how much chaos that would cause. I thought you were supposed to fix me. I'm telling you, it's eating people. And you're just laughing. You're insane, Doctor. Listen to me. You're not listening. It's your only bloody job. Doctor, you're late. And after all those promises, never mind, Doctor. let's not keep the pace. You're late. And after all those Doctor. promises, you're late. Doctor. You're and late. after all those and after all those promises, never mind. Doctor, you're late. And after all those promises, mm, never mind. Let's not keep the patients waiting. And if you want anything, just... Oh, sorry. I forgot. I'm not going to be here. The police still have some questions they want to ask about, you know. And then after that, I'm dropping in to see Ben. He's still in shock, and I thought we'd show we cared. We do still care, don't we, Doctor? Good. Anyway, I hope you're all caught up on Dr. Decker's tapes. I think Mariana is in first, but I'm sure they'll all become a blur by the end of the day. I'll see you later. Or tomorrow. Uh, probably tomorrow. I'll leave it to you then. I'm Mariana. Are you feeling okay? That's what Dr. Decker would say. I think you're supposed to tell me what's wrong with me. Isn't that how it works? The police keep picking me up for public nudity. I black out, and then the next thing I remember, I'm naked on the beach, like I've been washed up on shore. 
Nobody's pressed charges yet, but I can feel it. The police are getting suspicious. I do suffer from blackouts, which is strange as I can hold my breath for a really long time. But I'm not swimming before I black out. Dr. Decker thought it was anxiety originally. Then he worked it out. Dr. Decker thought I had generalized anxiety disorder, GAD, because of the blackouts. He thought I was breathing badly. Do you think I'm breathing badly? You can check my breathing if you want. Do you want me to lie down? Can you tell just by looking at me? I'm not worried about it, just if you are, I'm not sure holding my breath too long is causing blackouts. I mean, it could, but I don't remember ever having a blackout when I'm holding my breath. I normally blackout when I'm dancing. I like dancing. Do you like dancing? Cool. I dance to anything with a beat. <laughs> I dance a lot at nightclubs. I know most of the nightclubs around here. My favorite is the Pearl because they sell cheap vodka shots all night. You think my dancing causes my blackouts? No, I know it's the last thing I remember, but I don't think it's that. Sometimes I remember more, but I'm tired now. <laughs> Is that it for today? I don't drink. I work for myself. I make bracelets from things I find on the beach and sell them online. I spend a lot of time at the beach. It's just way more relaxing than anywhere else. You should come with me one day. I can show you all the sights. He eventually decided it wasn't anxiety, but I'm not gonna tell you his final diagnosis. We should have a fresh start. I don't want you influenced by the prognosis. I want to stop having the blackouts. I want to stop waking up at the beach. I want to remember those entire evenings. Can you suggest anything that might help? Will you do it for me? Will you watch me to see what happens? So, it's a date then. I'll let you know when. I film myself doing um, lots of things, but it's not so easy to do when you're blacked out. Well, that's why you're here, isn't it? You've replaced him. He was a good listener. I hope you are. Dr. Decker could really get inside you. It was, uh, unsettling. But you let him do it. Part of the process, I guess.
I've been a patient here for three months. Today is my patient birthday. Do I get a cake or something? That's okay, I wasn't really expecting one. Wow, let's get straight to it then. I'm not sure I feel comfortable speaking with you about that at the moment. When I wake up, my hair is dry, but it's pretty hot at the moment. I get baked quickly by the sun. It's possible I've been in the sea during my blackout. I never find my clothes. I don't know why I'm naked. I love the beach. Until somebody tells me it's gonna kill me, I'll keep going. Have you ever been addicted to something, doctor? I thought so when I first saw you. We should get on great. <laughs> Like you're not listening. I hold my breath when I'm swimming underwater. Most people do. Sometimes, if I'm really excited, I'll hold my breath accidentally, just for a few seconds. I don't know why. I guess people see me and call the police. But someone will take offense eventually, and I'll be charged with indecent exposure. Dr. Decker was fine. He had good relationships with his patients as far as I know. I'm not sure why anyone would want him dead. I'm a great swimmer. I won all these medals at school. I can hold my breath a really long time. Too long, really. My name is Claire Castleford, and as I'm paying a small fortune for these sessions, I'd expect you to be up to speed, Doctor. Being a witch has its perks, but honestly, I would give it all up in a heartbeat if it could free me from this madness. Well, according to your predecessor, I'm a delusional psychotic with obsessive tendencies. 
Oh, and a history of violence. <laughs> Sounds so cold when you put it like that though, doesn't it? To be fair, there was only one violent outburst that hardly qualifies as a history of violence. And he provoked me. I stabbed him with a steak knife. Shocking, isn't it? It was a brief moment of temporary insanity. Or temporary clarity, I'm not really sure which. David had been having an affair with his assistant optician, Iris. How predictable. Not just the affair, but an optician named Iris. I'm obsessed with my husband. It's absurd, really. Because he is here, and he shouldn't be. Lucky to be alive. He almost died. My husband is not a well man. We've been having problems for a while now. His health, if you can call it that, has been deteriorating rapidly in the last few weeks. I can't cope with caring for him anymore. David has trouble looking after himself. Sometimes I'll leave the lake house and he's just sitting in the rocking chair on the porch. And when I return the next evening, he's still there, just staring into the stars. He needs help, I know, but I can't hire anybody to care for him. David's staying at the lake house. It belonged to my parents, but I don't use it much anymore. I have the main house to myself. Since our altercation, he's become less and less active. His mind's become less and less active too. Such a delightful conversationalist at one time, now more of an enigmatic husk. I tried to hurt David once. That's why I'm here, isn't it? I'm not proud of my behavior, but I was very angry. It was a private matter though. The police should never have been involved. I never used to get angry. Ever. If you're angry, you're not in control. Isn't that right? And it would be very bad for me to lose control. Let's save that for another time, shall we? I'm rich, but I'm not made of money. And I'm fairly sure my time is up. Illusions. As in, seeing things that are not there. I'm not going to be any more specific. It's not true in any case. I'm not delusional. The most shocking thing about Dr. Decker's death is that it didn't bring it upon himself. But then I hadn't known him for a very long time. Perhaps I was wrong about him. Though the fact that he drank so much is a good indicator of his mental state. I thought it was common knowledge that he drank. You could smell it on his breath when you got close to him. He kept a bottle in his drawer. Such a cliché. Dr. Decker just had that look about him. You know what they say about us crazies. Takes one to know one. The police seem to think I'm dangerous. I'm only sitting here talking to you because I have a lot of money. Otherwise, there's no doubt I'd be thrown into prison for a very long time. That's why I need your help, Doctor. I assume they think I'm dangerous because I stabbed my husband. I suppose after what I did, there are people that might think I belonged in prison. What do you think, Doctor? 
Can I be saved with therapy or should I be locked up like a dangerous criminal? Keep up, Doctor. David is my husband. You have a lot of faith in your abilities. That's good. I look forward to being completely cured. I'm Nathan Peel. I'm a supermarket worker from, well, hell, really. It's like those montages you get in movies. Time passes, you wake up, shave, if you feel like it, shower, get dressed, what's the point? You get this day over and over, nothing changes. Am I in purgatory? Doctor. Because I'm stuck between this day and the next. Most of the time, anyway. Sometimes it looks different. Sometimes the bird song will change, or, or the weather will be less bleak. Or, the, or that person who nodded at you yesterday doesn't, doesn't do it today. But it doesn't usually change. You need a tragic event for change. Like a murder. I didn't see the driver. It was my fault. I pulled out and the lorry just rammed me. Well, Hannah. She was sat next to me. I was in shock, obviously. And when I came to, she was so close to me. It was like she was trying to hug me. But it wasn't right. Not natural. Bits of metal pushing through her. That was five years ago. I was fine for quite a while after the accident. Well, being treated for depression. I thought I was cured. It was only recently after meeting Dr. Decker that I had a strange deja vu. I'm exhausted. Doctor, is our time up? I've been shrunk for that already. If I had that day again, I wouldn't make the same mistake. Hannah would still be alive. We'd probably have a family by now. I haven't had any relationships since then. My fiance, my childhood sweetheart. We met at secondary school. She was head girl, I was the quiet one. She liked computer games, so I instantly fell for her. I proposed in Goldshire. She said she didn't date elves, so I leveled up to a human necromancer and asked again. Sorry, it's Warcraft? We spent a lot of time on there. Dr. Decker was a complex man. I spent a lot of time with him, but he won't remember it that way. I saw the conflict that Dr. Decker was going through. Let's just say you might look back on your life and think there's nothing you would have done differently. No two days were alike for him in the end. Like, he couldn't decide what to do with himself. He was like a kid in a sweet shop. He had so many options, he didn't know what to do. I suppose if you take too long picking, all your options run away. As far as Dr. Decker was concerned, we had Monday, then moved on to Tuesday. But me, I had Monday five, 10, 50 times before I got to Tuesday. I 
watch that Bill Murray film, Groundhog Day, to see if there's any clues. <laughs> to see if there's any clues. That's how bad it's gotten. I'm looking for a cure in a Hollywood movie. Can you help me, Doctor? I don't know how, but thank you, Doctor. This, this is our first time around, and I trust you. Dr. Decker's murder was sudden, brutal, it's terrible, but doctor, two weeks, two weeks I had of rolling days, no do-overs, no Monday, Monday, Monday. I wouldn't kill anyone though, I'd have to keep doing it, wouldn't I? Few things seem to move me forward. No, I can't move backwards any more than a day. I don't really seem to control it. It's generally always on. I have to try and change something to move forward. We played World of Warcraft a lot together. I guess it's not the cool thing to do anymore. But we had a lot of memories there. To be honest, it reminds me a lot of life now. The same thing over and over again. Bring me X bunnies to make a stew, Y badger teeth, rinse, repeat. Maybe I'm just grinding life. I'm not really fit for work anymore. I work in produce at the local supermarket. That mainly involves lifting heavy crates of fruit and veg into place for people to buy and doing that over and over again. My muscles don't seem to have grown much. I think that maybe I'm not aging when the day resets, I just reset with it. I used to be a builder. I'm 57. Kidding. Just if you spent the whole day at the gym and then repeat that day and not go, you'd have achieved nothing. Most of my days are blur. I'm not sure if it's the sleeping tablets I'm on or just how I've learned to switch off. I'm on Temazepam. Dr. Decker prescribed them for me. He thought I would sleep through to a whole new day. I didn't. I'm Bryce Hemmings. You must be the new doctor. Did you know Dr. Decker? He was an antagonistic psycho. I hope you're not from the same school of thought. I didn't really like Dr. Decker. And for quite a few reasons, actually. I'd rather talk about my own problems for now, though, if you don't mind. Dr. Decker would say one thing and do another. He would push me to do things I didn't want to do. He was getting worse towards the end. I'm surprised he didn't kill himself. I'm a grave digger, Doctor, and people are dying quicker than we can bury them. Originally, I was suffering with depression. Work was piling up, I, I kept missing deadlines. I wasn't used to all the failure. I got depressed. You'd think being a grave digger had its perks, but it can be very stressful. There's a trend going towards burial rather than cremation again. And as well as running out of space, we're running out of competent grave diggers. At least ones that can use a shovel, that is. I'm not feeling anywhere near as depressed as I used to, though. Not since I got the extra hour. Hey, 
Henley Church, where I work, is located on an old Norman Mott and Bailey. You can't use mechanical diggers or excavators there in case you destroy a relic. Henley Church is relatively small. Well, for the number of bodies they expect us to pack into the ground, it's relatively small. The whole building was once owned by Scientologists, but they handed it back to the community as a tax break, I believe, or they'd finished doing whatever it was they wanted to do with it. I stumbled across a relic myself, an ancient chess piece, a queen, I believe, the best chess piece, the most freedom of movement. But they took it away immediately and proclaimed the whole east side of Henley Church a protected site of archaeological importance, which means we're not allowed to use it until the archaeologists are finished. I wish I hadn't told anyone. I'm not sure I believe in any religion anymore. I used to believe in God, but not anymore. There are too many religions to pick from, don't you think? Then we agree. Have you watched Zeitgeist, Doctor? Some of it is believable, and the part about most religions stemming from the same basic facts. It's more likely they've all got it wrong, than one of them has got it right. At midnight each day, time as you know it freezes. In my world, it just slows down to almost a stop. But I don't. I'm free to wander around and do as I please. An hour later, normal reality continues. It's my very own midnight hour. It's a bizarre thing to know you have an extra hour every day. I rarely ever sleep until after midnight now, so I can appreciate the extra time. I get a lot of work done in that time. I'm completely caught up. The depression is no longer an issue. 25 hours is a blessing for me. But apparently it's not real, and I'm insane for thinking it is. What do you think, Doctor? I thought it would be too early to make a diagnosis, but it's good you're having a go anyway. In the extra hour, I mainly catch up with work. It's a godsend. Sometimes I play chess against myself. It relaxes and strengthens the mind all at once. Yes. Dr. Decker was murdered, Kel surprise. Murder does seem a bit harsh, doesn't it? And another grave to dig. I know as much about it as you do. Less, I would imagine. I like chess. I still play sometimes when I can find an opponent. There's nothing more satisfying than planning scores of moves in advance and then watching things unfold as you saw them. I shouldn't have told anyone about the Queen. I do like to be in control, but then I suppose most people do. Nobody wants life to carry them along helplessly. Everyone wants to kick against it and make their own way. Do you like to be in control, Doctor? If you like being in control, you'll have a tough time here. I saw it with Dr. Decker, such control, such stability. But he unraveled at the end. He couldn't keep control of everything, of everyone. He just set us up like dominoes, but we all toppled in unexpected ways. You'll find it all out in time, Doctor. Just not today. Can't have your head exploding, can we? I'm Elin. 
I'm 25 and I'm a nurse. God, I sound like I'm on one of those dating shows. Terry's one of the other nurses at the home. I don't think she likes me very much. I work in a nursing home for the elderly. I basically do end of life care. The usual things, making sure the patients are comfortable, making sure they're not in any pain, and I talk to them. I keep them company. Some of them get pretty frightened about what's coming. Well, those of them that aren't out of it on meds. I comfort them. Death is frightening, isn't it? Isn't it what everyone's afraid of? The great unknown. No one should have to face that alone. I don't like it when patients are heavily sedated, especially when there are alternatives, like herbal remedies. I mean, imagine if you only had a few days or weeks left to live. Would you want to spend it asleep? Exactly. I feel like it's almost criminal, like you're robbing people of their last moments on Earth. You should be able to savour the experience, not sleep your way to death. I'm not saying anyone should be happy about dying. I've seen lots of people die and it's a special moment. There's literally nothing else like it. I'm not really looking for love at the moment. I'm sort of married to my work, but in a good way. I'm a qualified herbalist. It's okay, you can laugh. Most people think herbalism is a joke, but I'd much rather help my patients sleep at night with valerian or passion flower than lorazepam, tamazepam or zolpidem. I started seeing Dr. Decker a few months ago. I thought it would be nice to have someone I could talk to about work. It can get a bit stressful sometimes. It can be sad sometimes. I don't like losing a patient, but that's the job. I don't get stressed about it or anything. It's not the job that stresses me. It's the people I work with, the other nurses. They're mean to me. They call me the angel of death because so many patients have died on my shift. I don't think they mean it. Obviously, it's not my fault. It just seems to happen that way. Three last month, three the month before that, I think. But only one so far this month, so that's good. Although one of my patients, Hilda, I don't think she's got long. She's one of the crotchety ones, always swearing and spitting at me. Never got anything nice to say. Thinks we're gonna smother her in her sleep or something. She doesn't bother me though. I've known a lot of doctors over the years. Most of them arrogant idiots who think nurses are just there to do their bidding, or worse. Dr. Decker was different. He had a lot of time for me. He was interested in my problems. He was a bit offbeat, but yeah, I liked him. 
but then I like most people. I'd been seeing him for about nine months, I think. I think it's terrible what happened to him. So awful. No one deserves to die like that. Oh, Doctor, glad I caught you. I thought you might want to hear what Ben had to say. Quick catch up. I wouldn't say we were best friends, but we did spend a lot of time together. There's only two of us that work here. I'm sure we'll become friends too, Doctor. Just try not to get murdered. I'm not sure Ben will be coming in for a while. He's still pretty shook up about finding the body. I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often in the line of work he's in. Anyway, he said he found the body at exactly 20 minutes past 10. And for some reason, the first thing he did was look at his watch. That's all he'd say before he'd shut down. And the police weren't very talkative either. Sorry, didn't you know? Ben's one of the night shift cleaners. I'm sure he's got some tales he could tell. Yes, Ben found Dr. Decker's body on Valentine's night in his office. In your office. Yes, you know, the 14th of February, the day of love, or remembering a massacre, whichever's more you. The police wanted to know what I was doing Valentine's night, you know, when the body was found. I was at home, all on my lonesome, so I guess that makes me a suspect. I think the police want you to make a short list of suspects, or maybe even find the killer. You're seeing all the patients that were on the books when he was killed. There was no forced entry, so they think it might be someone he knew, or someone who had access to the office. Yeah. Like little old me. Do you think I'm a suspect, Doctor? Oh, well, I wasn't expecting that. I suppose everyone's a suspect at the moment, even you. They did mention I needed grief counselling, though, and I said you'd sort me out. I know you didn't agree, but I thought I'd let you know. That's very kind of you. I don't know exactly, but a stabbing of some kind. We'll be getting the autopsy through at some point. I'll, I'll let you know when. I didn't see it myself, so I don't know. But I heard it was a bit of a mess with all the blood and everything. You know, they have people who clean up after such things, though, so you really can't tell, can you? But don't worry. That's a new chair. All I know is the police took his chair. Forensics, I suppose. He was stabbed, so that's quite a personal thing to do. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if it was one of the patients who had a problem with the treatment they were getting. I'm just surmising. If you're unhappy enough to kill your therapist, they're probably not doing a very good job. I wasn't really in his social circle, so I don't know if he had any friends. In terms of enemies, 
I heard things get heated in his office sometimes, but I won't name any names. Susan, Annabelle, Melissa, there are some names, but they're not names of anyone I know. I'm having a loop day. It's a do-over day. You won't remember. What's the name of your assistant again? You didn't know that yesterday. Can you remember where I met Hannah? Well done, Doctor. Yeah, we met at secondary. Wouldn't it be funny if my day loops if you fail to get a question right? I agree. I'm having a loop day. It's a do-over day. You won't remember. What's the name of your assistant again? Hmm. I suppose you did remember that yesterday. Can you remember where I met Hannah? Yeah, at secondary school. It's been fun, but... I've got a pill. Dr. Decker gave me this pill. He told me if I took it, I'd never have another loot day. It's got a small skull and crossbones on it. Should I take the tablet, Doctor? Your call. Cool. I don't think this is getting us anywhere, though. I'll see you tomorrow. Again. I'm having a loot day. It's a do-over day. You won't remember it. What's the name of your assistant again? Well done. Can you remember where I met Hannah? Yeah, great. Is there anything you can say that's going to break this loop for me? I never mentioned a pill this time, or a tablet. What the hell is going on here? Are you reliving my days? Something somewhere has changed since you arrived. Like some kind of sim theory. It's a thing. Some professor believes we could be living inside a computer simulation and someone is controlling us. And there are millions of these sims. And someone somewhere behind a keyboard is just causing havoc. I'm starting to think you have that keyboard, Doctor. Wait, don't answer that. I don't want to know. Midnight each day. On Valentine's night. Time as you know it freezes. Twenty minutes past ten. Keep up, Doctor. Thinks we're gonna smother her in her sleep. I'm a grave digger, Doctor. I was at home. David is my husband. All on my lonesome. Stabbed him with a steak knife. Nothing changes. I'm a qualified angel of death. When I'm dancing. You get this date over and over. Hilda. I black out. I don't think she's got long. And the lorry just... Naked on the beach. Hannah. Is that it for today? Hmm, deja vu. Are you sitting in exactly the same place I left you last night? Oh, that's where it all starts, Doctor. Hmm, anyway, do you think you can fit me in today? Looking at the diary, it's just the usual suspects and you must be getting sick of them already. I've got this for you. 
too. It's some more footage from Professor Alderby that was hiding away. Well, come find me if you need anything. Nothing, of course. The faculty thinks I've gone loopy, like some kind of spongy Mobius strip. That's why I'm here, isn't it, Dr. Decker? Him, God, the great old one, the elder God, Cthulhu, however you address him. Listen to me, you're not listening. It's your only bloody job. Well, let's call him God. He creates this world for his amusement, something he can play with and occasionally alter to suit his mood. God loves chaos, but something goes wrong. Man and woman evolve. What was once chaotic becomes well, more ordered. Without chaos, he has less power. When there's too much order, he becomes impotent. So he needs to instill chaos again. And do you know how he does this? No, and yes, but you're being too granular. He needs chaos so he can return, and the only thing stopping him is you. Not just you, uh, you and people like you, psychiatrists, doctors, nurses, anyone who is caring for people who are losing their sanity. You have no comprehension how important your job is, do you? He doesn't need your version of insanity to spread. He needs chaos. It's not the same. It's just a means to an end. They're not all cultists, unfortunately. Once you see the truth, it's hard not to spread chaos yourself, to cause further insanity and harm your own. I doubt it. But can I make you question your reality? Definitely. But in doing so, I would be promoting more chaos. On the basis, the central component of our universe is chaos. Science can only document a perception of the chaos at any one given moment in time, as by definition chaos is unpredictable from one moment to the next, which means that at any given moment we can choose to alter our perception of the world, no matter how much chaos that would cause. In ten seconds time there will be no gravity in this room and we will float. Three, two, one. You think nothing happened. Where's your glass, Doctor? <laughs>